Hello, my friends. Welcome to Monday Mindset, where we go live each Monday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time in the Healthy Real Food Challenge Facebook group to share inspiration and tips to help you with your sugar and flour free lifestyle. If you are new around here, I'm Erin Hart. I am a registered nurse health coach and I lost 125 pounds myself with a sugar and flour free lifestyles. And I just feel super passionate about this message and I uh, want to spread this message of hope. I empower women to lose weight for the last time so that you can find freedom from your cravings and peace with your food and your body. Uh, we started, um, be sure to stick with me until the end of this video because I have a really important announcement for a free event that's coming up that you're definitely not going to want to miss. So, uh, so anyway, guys, welcome. So glad that you're here. Uh, in this week, this week's Monday mindset, we are talking about how to navigate a crisis when you are a person that lives a sugar and flour free lifestyle. You know, strengthening your willpower when life is crazy is something that we all have to learn to do because life can be unexpected and it can throw us some curveballs sometimes, right? Life is just full of so many ups and downs <laughs> and we can never predict what's going to happen. Uh, last week I had a client who, a coaching client who faced a really significant hurdle when her husband uh, experienced complications from a surgery and had to be rushed to the ER, right? She wasn't expecting that. Um, life doesn't always go as we plan. And there are going to be days in your life for you uh, that you face unexpected challenges or even tragedy. And I hope that we never do, right? But but we just have to plan for uh, for those those moments when life is going to be challenging. So how do you maintain your willpower? when life feels out of control? How do you maintain healthy habits during a crisis? So what I want to say to this, first of all, is just to be so kind to yourself, you know, knowing that just know and uh, believe that you're doing the best that you can give yourself some grace and some credit, right? In preparation for the days in our lives that feel really hard like this, it's so important to build that automation in your program beforehand. Um, autom automation is going to help you on these days when life feels out of control and like, you know what hits the fan, right? So when you develop habits that become mindless and effortless to execute because you've done them so many times and in the same way, and you have that automation, you're giving your future willpower depleted self, <laughs> you know, that devastated self in the future, you're giving that person a gift. So let me give you a reality check for a second. <laughs> Stress, uh, unexpected change or loss, like those can cause some of our old coping mechanisms to resurface. No matter how strong we feel right now, it's very possible for us to like get to a point where some of those old coping mechanisms pop back up. And that's expected. Uh, but what we don't want to happen is to struggle for months or years after the challenge because we gave up or we never course corrected. And uh, if we can figure out how to stick to our plan, even on days of crisis, we're going to be able to create sustainability in this lifestyle. But having said that, I just want to, um, to let you know, like we celebrate constant course correction, right? We, there are days where we mess up, we make mistakes, right? And it just wasn't maybe our best day, but every day is a new day. So you just get right back on track. You don't beat yourself up. You reach out for help and, and you don't isolate, right? And then you just commit to quickly and immediately getting right back on track. Don't wait until Monday. Don't wait until the new year, right? Like as fast as you can get right back on track. So uh, thinking ahead for toward a crisis, right, <laughs> that you may p potentially face in the future, I just want to invite you now to think of the habits that the healthy habits that you have or that you're working on that are those non-negotiables for your self-care. What habits do you most want to maintain during a crisis? 
uh, we probably aren't going to be able to do like our full habit stack, right? Uh, on those days, like we need to focus on the crisis, but we also have to remember that prioritizing our self-care during a crisis will help us to show up the way we want to in a crisis. If we are feeling um, uncared for, or our physiological needs aren't being met, like our dietary needs or our sleep and s- stuff like that, it's just going to compound <laughs> the, the problem, right? So it's really better to do this thought work before the crisis and think of those habits that you most want to maintain during a crisis. So re- redefine those core habits as critical life support for you, the one who's handling the crisis, right? By prioritizing your self-care and meeting your basic physiological needs during a crisis, you're giving your yourself strength so that you can have more of an outward focus and help and care for others and, and deal with whatever is going on. You know, it's like putting your oxygen mask on first when you're in the airplane. Like self-care is not selfish during a crisis. It's essential. So when creating habits, keep um, the floor and ceiling in mind, right? As we're creating these habit stacks and automation in our program, we want to have room in there for for days like this. Days that we know are going to be our worst days where we're going to have no willpower. And um, so... I want you to think about as you're creating your habits right now, think of the floor and ceiling. So meaning what can I continue to do on my very worst day? Like when you know that, um, you know, it is that the, you know, what hits the fan in your life and, and you know, what can you continue to do on those days to care for yourself? And then think about what you can strive to do on your strongest days. Some days you feel so strong. You have an abundance of willpower in you. You know, like, so what is the floor and what's the ceiling when it comes to your habits? When a crisis hits, by maintaining the floor habits during a crisis, you're showing yourself that you're not giving up. So for your floor goal, you can identify like the smallest most meaningful dose that will show you that you're not giving up. And if you have the habit of exercise, maybe it's like simply putting on your running shoes or a one song movement break, right? You can do that on your worst day. Uh, when you have the flu or when someone's in the hospital or you just got terrible news, right? You can still do those things. And it's important because you need strength. And these are things that are willpower replenishing, and this is a way to care for yourself. So if you have the habit of writing your gratitude in your journal each day, you know, maybe it's just saying out uh, out loud to a spouse instead, or simply identifying like one thing to be grateful for, or you decide to buy like pre-made salad each day, you know, if you can't like make and prep your food. So It's just something, it's the something over nothing principle. Something is always better than nothing. And I know that sometimes we have this perfectionism that pops up in our programs, uh, but something is always better over nothing. And give yourself grace on those days when you're in a crisis, uh, but don't give up. Don't give up on those days. Show yourself that you're not giving up by just maintaining the floor habits. And maybe it's not every floor habit. Maybe you just do a couple of things to care for yourself. So like during the day of a crisis, just look for one good thing that you can do to care for yourself and prove to yourself that you're not giving up. Also, remember, ask for help. You don't have to do this alone. You know, where is support available to you? Who can support you during this crisis? Maybe you could ask a friend to bring you a healthy lunch, you know, to to the hospital. Um, Being able to accept and ask for support is a strength, not a weakness. 
during a crisis, it's really essential to reach out and connect with your support community and buddies more, not less, right? So ask for whatever support will help you through this difficult period. And above all, give yourself credit and grace for any effort that you make. Today, I invite you to give your future self that is going to go through a crisis the gift of identifying people that you could reach out to for support on that day and deciding which floor habits will be the most important to maintain. So will you do it? Will you identify those non-negotiable mini habits that you can do even on your worst day and, and write down a few people that you could call or <clears throat> reach out to for support during a crisis? Uh, I want you to journal that today. So will you do it? say yes. <laughs> I promise that this exercise, it really can help you to make your sugar and flour free lifestyle sustainable and that it will give you strength when you're feeling weak uh, in the future. So, so that you can continue to progress toward your health goals, even during a crisis. Um, by making these decisions in line with your values, even during a crisis, you're building your healthy identity. Uh, maintaining your health and your sugar and flour free lifestyle during a crisis. It's going to allow you the strength you need to show up the way that you want to and care for others who need you. All right. So uh, before we go, I just want to let you know about an exciting event that's coming up in February. Uh, you know how hard it is to lose weight and how confusing it is with all of the diets out there. To, to know how to get sustainable results. Um, you know how so many people are trying to get off of the dieting roller coaster only to lose a little bit of weight and then gain it all back and more. And you know how uh, to eat healthy, but it, is it hard for you to take action? Like you know intellectually what to do, but like you have a hard time actually doing it, doing what you know. Well, what I do, is I help women to achieve their goal body within 12 months with the customized healthy real food meal plan, mindset, coaching, and accountability. Uh, for example, one of my clients, she just achieved the milestone of losing 115 pounds after years of feeling hopeless and powerless to change. And if you are a woman who feels out of control around food, and you want to lose weight for the last time this year with a sugar and flour free lifestyle, I have a free event that is coming up. So on February 13th through the 16th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time for an hour each day, we have a live uh, virtual challenge that I want to invite you to. This is a four day interactive live event. Uh, where you will unlock the exact three-step framework that helped me to lose 125 pounds without calorie counting so that you don't just lose the weight this year, but you keep it off and you finally find peace with your food. So be sure to save your free seat while you still can. We only have limited availability. And if you can't show up live because, you know, like you have a life and <laughs> or a job or, you know, whatever, like re replays are going to be available to watch uh, for a limited time in the Facebook community if you can't come live. So the doors to my coaching program right now are closed, but during that week of the free challenge, we're going to open those doors again if you're looking for more support. But if you just want to attend the free four day event, you're going to get so much value. I have put so much work into this free challenge uh, because I want to share with you how to be successful at sustainable weight loss. It is possible. And not only is it possible, but when you follow the framework that I'm going to teach you in this challenge, uh, your goals go from feeling impossible to inevitable. And I know that you can achieve your goals too. So to register, sign up at arianhearthealthcoaching.com. And I love that the challenge is during Valentine's week because <laughs> We all need to love ourselves first, right? Before we can love everyone else, we need to love ourselves. And I want to invite you to love yourself first, sign up for this challenge and prioritize your self-care this year. Let's lose weight for the last time, get you to your goal 
so that you can be able to have the confidence to really achieve your dreams in your life and live the life that you want. So I am sending you love and, I, and I'm always cheering you on with your health goals. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you guys so much for coming and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.